at that time, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan! For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Just think of it, dear friends, why we commemorate the season of Lent. It all boils down to the first sin of Adam and Eve, our first parents. We find ourselves outside the garden. God offered our first parents life without toil, without pain. They would enjoy life with God forever by His provident care. They would not die. But there was a command attached. While they had had everything they needed, they were in the middle of the garden, two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. They were asked not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge under pain of death. That means that the tree of life was the obvious choice left for them. Yet, the serpent, or Satan, as we know him, beguiled Eve to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree of knowledge. See how cleverly the serpent reasons with Eve. Now, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. God intended life forever for our first parents. That was his intention. But the serpent enticed them to choose knowledge. If only our first parents had chosen to eat of the tree of life, life would be without death forever. The serpent, my dear brothers and sisters, had presented knowledge as more attractive than life. How? How did he do it? 
they would become like God, knowing good and evil. That was attractive. Rather than accept life forever on God's terms, the serpent had tempted the first parents to choose the knowledge of good and evil. Until then, they who knew no evil realized suddenly what evil was, having disobeyed God's command. Truly, as the serpent had told them, their eyes were opened. They now, they know that they have transgressed the Lord's command, for they realize that they are naked. Until then, they did not know. If only they had chosen to eat the fruit of the tree of life, they would have ushered in immortal life. But having chosen the tree of knowledge, they ushered in death. That is the beginning of humanity, dear brothers and sisters, with a lifespan, as the psalmist says, 70 or 80 for those who are strong. By choosing knowledge rather than life, our parents expressed their desire to live on their own terms. They didn't want life from God as a gift, but life as earned by their own sweat, pain, and toil, which of course they did not know when the devil tempted them. Their disobedience brought in spiritual death, which ultimately led to physical death, for they were put out of the garden so that they had no access to the tree of life. Today, dear friends, we are laboring under this spiritual and physical weakness without access to the tree of life. The season of Lent is meant to show us how Jesus has reversed our predicament by making the tree of life once again accessible to us, it will be finally the garden that was lost in the very first book of Genesis in the reading of today is restored in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14, which I shall read for you. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. However, Jesus could restore access to the tree of life only by becoming one with our human condition. One of the hardest things, dear friends, for us to believe for Christians, I mean, to believe is that Jesus was truly human. Yet the Gospels tell us how human he was. He felt hungry, thirsty, he knew pain, he knew fear. He got angry, he wept. We understand all that. But the New Testament insists that there was something more. He was tempted like all human beings are. It is this last trait of being tempted as human beings are, which Jesus, Jesus also shared, that is interesting. Why? Why is it so interesting? Because Jesus, by sharing our humanness, had to experience temptation which had been the lot of humankind right from the beginning, from Adam and Eve. Secondly, if Jesus was to be our Redeemer, he had to fight and defeat the forces of evil and overcome the tempter. Where they had failed, Jesus had to succeed. As the author of the letter to the Hebrews writes, since he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is now able to help those 
who are tempted. The Gospels then, my dear brothers and sisters, presents us with the three temptations of Jesus. In each case, you see a similar pattern. Jesus abides by the word of God. He is committed to do only the will of the Father. Before the temptation of Jesus, mind you, Matthew tells us of the story of the baptism of Jesus, in which the Father's voice is heard, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. As he leaves the baptismal waters of Jordan to begin his public ministry as the anointed Son of God, he had to go through the test. No child of God can go without trials because this is the means to distinguish between a true and false child of God. As Ben Sirach advises, My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing. And Jesus spent 40 days, 40 nights in the desert preparing for the test. The tests, my dear friends, represent the innate desires of humans that can sometimes give vent to acts of aggression against both God and their fellow human beings. The temptations actually embrace the whole gamut of human desires. The first temptation concerning pleasure of food and drink and sensual, symbolized by the temptation to turn stones into bread. Now there's a contrast. Whereas Israel in the wilderness had failed a similar test, when they had complained to Moses, why did you bring us out into the wilderness to die when we had flesh to eat in Egypt? Jesus now overpowers Satan with the words, Man shall li not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Where Israel failed, Jesus succeeded. The second temptation is the pleasure of becoming a sensation. The need for recognition symbolized by the temptation to prove oneself, prove himself as a son of God by throwing himself headlong from the pinnacle of the temple. Again, Israel in the wilderness had put the Lord to the test at, at Massa. Once again, Jesus overpowered Satan by saying, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, Jesus proved victorious. The third temptation, a temptation of pleasure, of power, symbolized by the temptation to seek dominion and glory over all earthly kingdoms. Only if Jesus would fall down and worship Satan. Once again, where Israel failed the test, because the people made the golden calf and molten gods, they failed. But Jesus passed the test by telling Satan, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. My dear brothers and sisters, by eating of the tree of knowledge, our first parents had been deprived of the fruit of the tree of life. They should have chosen that, but they did not. That disobedience had consequences on Israel as well. Now, by his obedience, his obedience to God's will, to God's word, Jesus restored our right to the fruit of the tree of life. As St. Paul tells us, one man's disobedience made many sinners. 
But now by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. The Lenten season makes us aware then of our selfish nature. The temptation is to use our gifts for ourselves rather than for the common good. As the first temptation tempts us. Sometimes we are tempted to do it alone without help from God. We forget our identity. We forget our dignity which comes from God. The second temptation. In today's fast-paced world, we could end up worshipping false gods. Money is one such entity. To have it by whatever means. But can we pursue goals by any means whatsoever? The third temptation. Does the end justify the means? Jesus says, no. He remains steadfast and faithful to God, rejecting the shortcuts offered by the devil. The temptations we face sound remarkably like the temptation Jesus had to face. The problem is that people rarely recognize them for what they are. Evil often comes disguised as good and attractive. Temptation is the enticement to live any other way than the way revealed by God. And temptations must necessarily come. Since Jesus personally knew the struggle, he exhorted his disciples to watch and pray. And it is not surprising that in the prayer he taught us, he urges us to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We are asking the Lord to not let us succumb to temptation. It is a prayer not to be preserved from temptation, but to be preserved in temptation. When we fight temptations, my dear brothers and sisters, we rely on God. We know that in spite of it, we do badly. We fall. We barely pass. But that's not important. What is important is that we strive together with God. We d rely on God to help us. When we meet God face to face, it's not enough to have passed the test because when we go with God, we rely on Him, we trust Him, we will all be promoted to the garden. As we celebrate this Eucharist then, we celebrate the good news that Jesus has overcome Satan. He has restored our human nature to enjoy the fruit of the tree of life of which we shall eat one day. May this Eucharist then become an anticipation of the final banquet at our, restore, at our restoration back to paradise. Amen.